السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه Welcome to another episode of our Ramadan Reflection Series Keys to the Divine Compass where we go through verses from every juz throughout the month of Ramadan in order to learn lessons we can apply to our daily lives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sad وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا ذَلِكَ ظَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنَ النَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says It is not without purpose that we created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. That may be what the disbelievers assume. However, they will suffer from the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this verse in the context of the story of Dawood alayhi salam. He starts off the surah talking about the Qur'an and then he mentions that the disbelievers say وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا عَجِّلْ لَنَا قِطَّنَا قَبَلَ يَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ Our Lord, bring our share of the punishment sooner قَبَلَ يَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ Before the day of the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then comforts the Prophet وسلم, saying, اصبر على ما يقولون. Be patient on what they say. وَذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا دَاوُودَ ذَا الْأَيْدِ And remember our slave, our servant Dawood alayhi salam. And then he goes on and continues mentioning the story of Dawood alayhi salam. But in between the story of Dawood alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this ayah that the heavens and the earth and everything in between is not without a purpose. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing this ayah in the middle of the story? It is so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, can help us take a st- step back and realize that if we have these stories, if we hear these stories, they are only going to be beneficial if we understand our purpose in life, if we understand the reality of this world. And so he takes this step back and mentions that there is a purpose in the creation of the heavens and the earth. And he says, and then he goes on and he continues, he says, أَمْ نَجَعَلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Shall we make those who believe and do righteous deeds equal to those who commit mischief on the earth? أَمْ نَجَعَلُ الْمُتَّقِينَ كَالْفُجَّارِ Or shall we make the God-fearing equal to the sinners? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that everyone will not be the same. If someone is sinful, if someone is evil, if someone is oppressive, they will not be treated the same as someone who is righteous, someone who is God-conscious, someone who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there will be a difference between the believers. It may, it may be well possible that in this life we don't notice those differences, that believers are, li- are living a life and disbelievers are living a life of comfort and ease. The disbelievers and the oppressors, they're not seeing the results of their actions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they will be held accountable on the day of judgment. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after reminding us of our purpose in this world, our goal in this life, then he goes on and brings it back to the Qur'an. Just since in the beginning of the surah he talked about the Qur'an, now he brings it back to the Qur'an. Now that we realize that the, this life is not without a purpose, what is the role of the Qur'an in our life? He says, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ he says that it is a book that was revealed, blessed, so that you may reflect, so that they may reflect on its meanings. So this is the first goal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. So in this month of Ramadan, we read the Qur'an, we listen to the Qur'an, 
everything about Ramadan is focused upon the Quran. But if we're not if we're not fulfilling this purpose of reflecting, of doing tadabbur on the Quran, then we are missing out on one of these objectives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays out regarding the Quran. So the first is لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ And for those with understanding to take heed, to take heed to the advice in the Quran, the reminders in the Quran, the stories in the Quran. When we hear the story of the Prophet ﷺ in the Quran and the struggles he went through, do we take lessons from that? Do we look at how that applies to our daily lives? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Yusuf السلام, went, to, went through these different struggles and look, learn from his patience and learn from his forgiveness and learn from these characters and qualities, do we actually reflect on that and take heed to that advice and apply it to our lives? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to follow the Prophet وسلم, and take him as an example, do we take heed to that? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an that we should reflect on the verses of the Qur'an, do we take heed to that? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights a specific quality of the believers who do this, who actually take heed to the reminders in the Qur'an. And he says, وَلِيَذَّكَّرَ أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something similar to this passage in another surah. Over here in this passage, we see that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights that the world and the creation of the heavens and the earth is not without purpose. And he mentions that those of understanding take heed. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights it in a different light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights it in terms of the believers. He says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the variation of the night and the day, are certainly signs for those who understand, those who take lessons. أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ he, uses, he describes these people with the same description. And then he says, now quoting those believers, instead of himself saying it like he does in this verse, he quotes those believers and he says, and first describing them and then quoting them, he says, they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Our Lord, you have not created this in vain, without a purpose. Subhanak, how perfect you are. Glory be to you. Faqina adab al nar. So protect us from the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these people. Who are they? Alladina, in the previous, in the ayah before this, Alladina yadkurun Allah qiyaman, wa qu'udan, wa ala junubihim, wa yatafakkarun fi khalqi samawati wal ard. They are those who remember Allah. Standing, sitting, and on their sides, laying down, and then they reflect on the heavens and the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting that if someone is truly intelligent, is truly someone who is smart, then they will have these qualities. If they really have an intellect, they will remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. They will reflect on the things around them, the creations around them, and that will lead them to this conclusion that وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created the heavens and the earth and everything in it without a purpose. So to conclude, we as Muslims need to work on reflecting on the Qur'an and fulfilling its purpose, we need to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with our intellect, has gifted us with so many blessings. We need to use that to reflect on the Qur'an and reflect on those things around us. And through that, 
it will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will get us to a point where we are like those people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting, lying down in all times of our life and everything around us becomes a sign towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becomes a reminder of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we're driving by and we see the trees, we say, SubhanAllah, how perfect you are, Allah. When we say, when we, when we eat meals, we say, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing that He gave that to us. When we see the mountains as we're driving, we say, Allahu Akbar, how great you are, O Allah, thinking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created such amazing creations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are of intellect, those of understanding from the ulul albab. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakumullahu khairan, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.